Hello, and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso, and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe, and I'm an adjunct faculty at Columbia College Chicago in the Interior Architecture program. Shout out to all my students. It's a sunny day here on Labor Day weekend in Chicago. I hope everyone is doing great. I'm doing great. Today is the final video in a series that I've called Back to Basics. Today we're going to look at Rhino Lighting to end this series. But if I go back over to my YouTube channel, you'll see that this series started out by how do you make a custom PDF or a custom paper size in Rhino? How do you work with extrusions, lofts, sweeps, revolve, then a basic Rhino render setup, and then the last video was materials, and now the very last video is going to be Rhino lighting. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please click on the red button for subscribe, or at the end of the video, you can click on my head that'll pop up. And also, if you haven't connected with me on Instagram, my username is my first name Alfonso underscore my last name Peluso. Go ahead and connect with me, see what I'm up to. Last week I got to go out and see what a 27,000 square foot homes basement is going to look like. <laughs> so that was pretty cool to check out. Here's a little clip from my... <clears throat> Rhino materials video so go ahead and connect with me on Instagram I like connecting with everyone alright so here we are so Rhino lighting this is what we're gonna end up with in the end we'll take a look back at making a Sun you see the Sun is coming in here uh, in this image in the lower right we're gonna look at a, a what's called a sphere light or a point light or sometimes called an omni light and you see those are being lit up in the ceiling we're going to look at a rectangle light, so it's creating this linear soffit light on the top left. We're going to look at the emissive material, so you see this pink cube. Uh, it works a little bit differently in the Rhino renderer than it does with some of the plugins like V-Ray. We'll look at a couple bonus items. We'll look at render and window, which is super helpful. Look at fillet edge, which goes back to a modeling technique, and an open last rendering, which I think is awesome. It even works after you close the file down. Rhino saves the last rendering that was created, and you can type in open last rendering. So I love that one. All right, let's uh, let's jump into this. Let me open a file that we're going to work with, and then we'll move forward with it. Alright, so here's our file. I'm going to go ahead and save as so I get this in the right place. Alright, so the first thing I mentioned was the sun. Now, the sun, to see the sun dialog box, it's just a matter of typing in the word sun, enter, and that will pop up. And I like to keep this docked over on the far right because I use it quite often in Rhino. So under sun position I can go ahead and I can move this little dot around. I can move the sun position so whether it's coming in from the northwest or the northeast or completely from the other side of the building I can do that. I can also work with how far it comes into the building. So the higher in the sky it is, the closer to 90 the less it comes into the building, the lower it is to zero, the more it's coming into the building. So we might fine tune this a little bit as we go with some of the lighting that we're making. All right, we'll leave it there for now. Okay, so a point light. So we're gonna need some, what I call recess cans to take those point lights in. So. I should probably open up an image in Photoshop. There it is, 25 years of Photoshop. You guys know I love that version, the 2015 version. <laughs> All right, that's opening up here. All right, let's go ahead and open up. All right, 
so this is this is what we'll end up with at the very end okay so I'm referring to these lights in the ceiling here what I call recessed cans and notice the detail that's in these lights that's something that's really important that sometimes people forget having the little metal rim around it a little self illuminated disc in there so it really looks like it's being lit so let's go ahead and make make those so we're gonna need uh, we'll put some holes in the actual ceiling so recessed can pockets I'll call them light pockets so let's go back over to Rhino here and let's make a new layer call this layer light pockets Right, make it current. Let's look at this in a top view. Okay, I'm going to turn my grid snap on. And I'm going to turn off this layer zero for a moment. Okay, so I'm going to start by making a circle, snapping to the grid. We're going to make the diameter of this six inches. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'll extrude this. So I'm going to select it, type in extrude curve. Now, in a front view, you'll see this is on the on the floor. For now, we'll move it up to the ceiling. So our ceiling total depth is a foot. I just want this, or six inches. I just want this half of the total depth. So we're going to make this three inches and then we'll go ahead and we're going to move this move it to the ceiling okay so that's that and the ceiling we'll get rid of the original actually I want to keep this this original circle so let me step back because that's going to be helpful for me so I'm going to select the extrusion and the original circle and I'll move that up. Okay. Alright, let's go back to our top view. Alright, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy it in both directions, five feet. So in that direction and that direction and then I'll take all three of those and copy those down five feet alright so let's see if that's in our camera view alright so we got a little one right there in the upper left and we got these three I think I'm gonna move the camera back just a, just a bit I can do this if I go to uh, deselect everything so just camera 01 and let's do this so right now our lens length is 28 if I make it 27 it zooms back just a little bit and if I go back to light pockets all right, I'm going to go back even just a little more. So that's 27. Let's try 25. We'll go there. All right, that looks great. That's two rows of lighting almost that we're that we're looking at. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to subtract those uh from from the ceiling. Okay, so I'm going to use a boolean difference, subtract from the ceiling, and I'm going to use those objects, delete input, in this case I'm going to pick no. Alright, okay, so th th they're there, we'll see those in a moment. Now I'm going to make a new layer, I'm going to call this one light recess okay so the light recess layer is current 
that those are going to be the actual lights. So I'm just ch giving some color to this other layer. So my lights, I'll just leave those layers as is black. Okay, so light recess. So if I go to a perspective view, you see that I have the holes in the ceilings for the hole holes in the ceiling for the lights. Now I'm going to put the actual lights in. I'm going to do that in a top view. Okay, so I'm going to do that from my render tools tab in Rhino. And when I go to render tools, I see that I have a series of different lights that I can make. Okay, and we're going to make a point light or an omni light or a sphere light. It's a light that shines in all directions. So I'm going to make that. I'm going to put that right right in the center there and I have to be careful and make sure that it is on the ceiling okay so there's that light so I always like to make one light place one light in and then render it before you notice we made six lights I don't want to place six lights in and then try to troubleshoot and try to get the lighting right so out of the six lights I just made one and now we're gonna go ahead and, and try to make it look correct or look the way we want it to look alright so let's go ahead and I'm gonna turn off the glass layer I don't want to render with the glass layer I'm gonna render at a lower resolution than usual I'm gonna render at 960 by 640 This is where. Okay, so you see where we're getting some light there in that light pocket. So that's working. That's working nicely. So now, what I'm going to do in in Rhino here is I'm going to bring that light down a little bit so that I can make my disc, my self-illuminated disc, and my metal rim around it. So let's go back to our. Photoshop so I want to make that metal disc and that self illuminated object now also I also end up changing the color of that light so right now you saw that that light in Rhino is very bright white I'm gonna change it to more of a warm color alright so let's start with changing it to a warm color okay so what I need to do is I need to be able to select that light in in Rhino. Let's go to a front view so I can select that light. I can <clears throat> I can go to properties and I can click on the little light button. Okay, so I have the light select selected. I went to properties and I clicked on the little light button and I can change the color of it. So we might we might adjust this later, but I'll start with that. And then something else to point out is the intensity right now is 100. As I add more lights, I'll probably have to lower the intensity of that. Okay. All right. So let's make, let's detail these lights out a little bit. So we have our, our light pockets. Let me get rid of the, the extrusions for those if I can. Alright, so I have those light pockets. I'm going to extrude those. Take off my grid snap for a moment. So I'm going to extrude these down into the building, let's say two inches. Oh, that looks way too thick. Let's try that again. 
Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking, two inches. Okay, how about half of an inch? There we go. Much better. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so those are going to be, that's going to be the light trim. All right, so let's get that, let's get those on a layer. I like using my uh, extrusion filter, select extrusion, so I can get those extrusions. Just get rid of all these. Okay, so I'm going to put those on a new layer, call it light trim. We'll deal with the material in a little bit. Okay. And then let's see what we have. We have our light recess. That's those are gonna be our lights. Alright, so light trim. Light pockets. Go ahead and extrude. I'm going to extrude this a half inch upward. Alright. So those are going to be the little discs. Alright, and we're going to put that on a layer, light disc. Give that a color. Okay. Alright, now this light, now I need to move it. I need to move it down. I'm going to move it down two inches and see what that looks like. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to render it, but I don't want to have to render the whole scene. So I want to render just a blow up. There is a render blow up in Rhino, but there's something better called a render in window. So if I type that out, render in window and then I can pick the area that I want to render and it just renders out that little area for me that looks okay it looks a little bit saturated right now with color but not too bad I'm not going to change it until I array the rest of the lights but that's looking pretty good how about um, how about some material on those objects okay so let's do that right now so the light disc okay the light disc I'm gonna make that I'm gonna always make this custom I'll call this light disc I'm gonna make it custom I'm gonna make give it a little bit of transparency a little bit of reflectivity a little bit of gloss I'm going to go down and turn on self-illumination. We'll talk a little bit more about that at the end. And the emission color, I'm going to make this for now. I'm going to make it somewhat like my light color. Okay, so we have that. We have our, our light disc. Let's set our light trim material. So this we're going to make uh, uh, like a metal material, make it custom, make it a gray color, like a bluish gray. Okay, 
give it some glossiness, some reflectivity. No transparency in this case. All right, so let's see what that looks like. Let's do our render in window. Select the rectangle. All right, we don't have a great sense of it right now because the resolution's low, but we'll get there. All right, so now that I have one light working the way that I want it, I can array that light to the remaining five locations. So I'm going to do that in a top view. Okay, select that light. Copy it. It's five feet. Select all the lights. Copy those down five feet. All right, go back to my camera. Okay, so now things are, are really bright. We can see that. And if we were to render this out, we can do that. And let's just take a look. So very bright, very saturated with color. I don't even have to render much more than that to know that we're going to have to turn the intensity down on those lights. Okay, so should be able to just select any one of the lights. Let's go back to a top view or just type in SEL lights. Go to properties light. Okay, so the intensity is 100. How about an intensity of 20? Okay, you see that starts to starts to look better there. Let's take a look at how it looks in the viewport. Okay, not too bad. I think I'll change the color of it because I'm not really getting, you know, the light glow that I want because I brought the that intensity down so low. I brought it down to 20 that I'm starting to lose some of that light glow, uh, which, you know, Photoshop is your best friend. I can always go in and change that in Photoshop, but while I'm here, I would like to change it. Okay, so that intensity is 20. If I make that light brighter... see if that's going to fix it. All right, so that's a certainly a good start for our point lights. So next next on the list here. So that was our point light or sphere light. Next one is looking at a rectangular light or I sometimes call it a linear light. All right, so we're going to make a little object here. Let's go to our top view. I go to layers, I'm going to call this new layer, I'm going to call it soffit. Give it a color. Okay, make it current. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a box. And then I'll, I'll manipulate the size of it in a bit. make the height of it two inches. It's huge right now. We'll change the size of it. Just make it stick out, say, two feet. All right, let's lower it down. Right now it's right at the top of the ceiling. All right, so what is there it is. So we're going to put we're going to place a light above it. I'm going to raise it up a little bit. Okay, 
good. So we're going to place a linear light or, or what's called a rectangular light right above it. So in my top view, I'm going to, so from my render tools, I'm going to choose create rectangular light. And my snaps are off. So I'm not going to make it um, the full length. I'm only going to make it the length of what I see in my in my rendering. Okay, let's see which way that's pointing. Oh, it went on went on an angle there. Saw that. Looks strange. <laughs> okay, let's try it again. So create rectangle light. I'm gonna turn my my snap off for a moment. So what it wants is it wants an edge, first edge, and then the depth of that edge. Okay, and we should also put this on a new layer called rectangle light. Because if we turn those layers off, it turns the light off. So that's one way to turn off the light. And one thing I didn't talk about is all those lights that we made for the recess. Those, when we went to properties, we only had to change one. Even though if I type in the command lights, even though it gives me a bunch of omnis. But again, if I change one, they all change, and that's because I used copy. So that's important. This is a helpful little box here. I should have put this in the bonus. Okay, so let's go to a front view here. Let's pick this light off the floor. Place it in the soffit area. Let's put it on the rectangle light layer. Okay, so we have that. All right, so let's let's uh, let's see what this light is actually looking like. It takes a little bit of work to get it working, <laughs> no pun intended. All right, so I'm, I'm going to render that window over there on the far left. So we're going to use our command render in window, and we're going to select that rectangle to render. And we'll let that render out. Okay, so we're not seeing it. We're just getting a lot of shadow. We're really not seeing that light show up. So this is where we do see a little bit in this viewport, just a little bit. So this is where we want to select our light. And we want to go to properties and click on the little light button. So you'd say, okay, the intensity is already at 100, but what do I do? Well, um, that intensity can go far beyond 100 if you type in more than that. You see what's happening there. It's kind of washing out my whole scene, but let's try, let's try 1,000. It was 100. I want to try 10 times that. So again, I'm gonna we'll do the render and window. Pick my window to render. There I can start to see some of that light showing up now. Alright, so maybe a little bit lower than a thousand. Let's try let's try eight hundred. And then also, I want to go back to my recess lights. All right, so that for whatever reason they have different colors and it varies, but let's let's get that set straight. So let's make it thirty. Let's get our colors. Okay, so let's start to turn on some of our layers. Save this. All right, so what's left? What's left is there's a fillet edge, 
and emissive material. So we're going to look at that. So I'm going to make a layer. Make a new layer for this. So emissive box. Okay, so if you guys have done emissive materials in 3ds Max or V-Ray or Lumion or Enscape or whatever rendering engine, you'll see that you can get that to illuminate as a light source. It doesn't work in Rhino without a plugin, but we can still take a look at that. So let's look at it. All right, so emissive box, that'll be a current layer. Give that a color. I'm going to go ahead and make a box over here. A little bigger than I want. Let's try it again. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the command. This is part of the bonus. So fill it edge. Now when you do fill it edge, you have to set your next radius. So I'm going to set my next radius to 0.3. That's important. And then select edges to fill it. So I'm going to select all my edges of the box. Hit enter. Hit enter one more time. And I get that fill it box. That nice, those nice little rounded corners of the box. Alright, so let's make this material. Let's call this emissive. Let's go to custom. I'm going to change the color of this to like a pinkish color. I'm going to give it some glossiness, some reflectivity, a little bit of transparency. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to turn on self illumination. We saw this a little while ago, but we didn't change the emission color. So I'm going to make that somewhat of a pink color. Okay, and again, it's not going to light up the room, unfortunately. All right, so let's uh, let's turn off the glass layer, and let's do a render in window. Loving this render in window. Pick my box. All right, that looks pretty cool. I'm just gonna fine tune that material just a little bit. Let's take a look at it. I'm gonna make it glossier, a little bit more glossy than reflective. All right, let me make sure I save this. Turn my glass back on. Did I miss anything else? Let's take a look at the outline. Nope, looks like we covered everything. Let's just get a final rendering of this. Don't worry, you won't have to wait for the whole thing. I'll speed it up for you. So this looks a little overexposed, but remember, this it's a transparent background. So again, if I close this and then use my open last rendering, 
I'll see it as a as a transparent background, which is what it's going to look like when I open it up as a PNG with a little bit of you know reflection of the self-illuminated object. But uh, this looks really great for just out of Rhino. I think straight out of Rhino, I think this is really awesome. Um, yeah, I know we rely a lot on a lot of the plugins for Rhino for rendering, but I think you can do some really good if you're willing to wait a little bit for the rendering. Uh, you can create some really good images in Rhino. All right, if you found this video helpful and you like it, click on the little like button below. Let me know why you like the video. I always like to interact with people and hear what they like about the video. My head's going to pop up. Click on my head to subscribe to my channel. A couple of past videos are going to pop up, one on Rhino materials and another on the playlist for the Rhino back to basics. I will see you next time.